Bob Duffy from Intel here, and I want to show you a demo of how you can build an application to add variability and configuration controls to motion sensors. And there's a good reason why. Um, I've taken my Ultrabook application that I used for motion and sensors, um, and I had put it on a tablet here and given it to my daughter to use. And I noticed something very interesting. Um, when she was holding the device, she was holding it like this. When I had been using the device, I had been holding it like this. Mostly because that's the way that my Ultrabook uh, had been set up. Is the keyboard was like this, the screen was up, and when I was moving the device, I was moving it around kind of like this. Well, she held it like that. And it changed the app experience. In fact, the application wasn't as fun and intuitive for her to use. Um, so I set up some new controls. So check out this video and see what I did. So here's an example of my application, and what I want to do is walk you through the calibrate feature of my application that allows you to calibrate and adjust for variability in the motion sensors. So I've got a lot of different um, features and functions here that allow the user to calibrate uh, the motion sensors, but one thing you'll notice right off the bat is you'll see this ship that I can move around. And one thing I did immediately is I put kind of a demo play mode here that allows you to test the uh, controls of the game before you actually get into the game. Um, one of the first features I added was a spin rate. Um, so one thing I noticed is that when people hold an Ultrabook, they move it very so slightly. But when they're holding a tablet like this, they move it all over the place. And if you held something like a mobile phone, you'd really move that around quite a bit. So the degree that you move the device might change depending upon the device you have at hand. Um, so I allowed for a spin rate change. So if I just kind of move it a little bit here, you'll see the ship, he's going to spin quite a bit all over the place. That's fast moving versus slow, which now I move it back and forth and he hardly turns. He moves left and right, but the spinning motion was very different. Um, but one of the key features is this um, neutral angle number that I added. So I'm allowing the user to set the neutral angle for the device. So if you look at this, this device is nearly upright. It's nearly 90 degrees. Um, very few people will hold it exactly at 90 degrees. So I set it to 75 here. So it allows if I move this device down, I may move it say to 85 degrees this way, or maybe move it back to 65 degrees that way. So 75 seems to be a kind of a good neutral angle um, if you're holding it like this. Um, but if I set it to 0 or 30, I'll set it to 30 here, and you'll notice that it's, 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 oops, there we go, set it to 30 there. Um, you'll notice that it's very difficult to get that, there it is, finally it moved. So 30 degrees is my neutral angle, which would be right about there, right? Um, so if I liked holding the device upright, uh, it's going to be very difficult to move that ship up higher on the screen. You got to tilt it too far. So allowing for that variability in the neutral angle and allowing the user to set it will create a better user experience, especially when you don't know if the sensor is in the keyboard, if the sensor's in the screen, or if that screen's flipped around or detached from the device. Um, adding this feature uh, provides control to the user. 